This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. A fit body leads to a fit mind and nobody probably recognizes the importance of that more than Rajiv Modi, the CEO and chairman of Saskin Technologies, as he focuses on knowledge to drive his company forward. Join us as we go behind the scenes to understand what makes Saskin tick. It's only about 8.20 but we already headed off to the Saskin office to get a head start on the day and of course to beat bangers in Payne's traffic. Saskin's corporate office here in Bangalore. They have centers all across the country, including Chennai and Pune, apart from centers across the world. But we'll discuss all of that during the course of the day. So, first off, I'd like to ask you, tell us about Saskin in your own words. Saskin is a, is a dream, it's a passion, uh, it's something I think we've uh, put our whole hearts and minds behind it to create. And today, uh, it's a company that's uh, making strides in the, in the world of uh, communications. And uh, we are really proud of the fact that uh, we are one of the few companies uh, which is a focus play and uh, uh, in the in the R and D uh, outsourcing space, doing all leading edge work for all the different uh, uh, players in this uh, entire value chain, and uh, we are also proud of the fact that uh, we are working uh, with the tier ones that make up uh, this entire business, be it large network equipment players, be it large uh, handset manufacturers, silicon vendors, service providers. Uh, with uh, centers all over the world. Uh, now, of course, Askin is making strides to become a global company. Uh, as you know, we have, of course, uh, centers in Bangalore and in uh, Chennai as well as in Pune, but outside of India now we have a significant presence in Finland as well as in, in Mexico. So, to me, personally, I think uh, Saskin is, is, uh, is, is, is a baby. So. Going back a little, you're, of course, one of the true entrepreneurs starting off Saskin in a garage in California before you moved to India. What was that journey like? I mean, going back in, in history, it's, it's a wonderful dream, actually, because you are still not worried about failures or anything. You're not still worried about uh, you know, what do you call what's going to happen. It was just saying, OK, let's do it. Let's see what, what's an outcome. Let's see what comes out of it. So I, I, I cherish, cherish those memories quite a bit, actually. Speaking of that success, you've just announced a joint venture with IDG. Can you tell us more? Yeah, uh, IDG is, uh, uh, with, with IDG we have announced a, a, a venture which is uh, addressing the, the, uh, the machine to machine communications. 
as you know, within this ASCIN context, we are focused very strongly in the communications and very, very strong on, on human to human communication. But now we are seeing a, a good, good demand, good uh, market coming up uh, where all the machines around us will start communicating with themselves uh, in, in certain, certain, certain manner. And it's going to create interesting opportunities where there'll be self monitoring of it or there'll be self analysis which could feed into the, the R&D side of it or it could feed into the maintenance side of it. And that's going to be according to a report recently published uh, or a technology review that I read in The Economist says that it's going to be much larger than the human to human communication. And just to give you a context, I mean, uh, human to human communication today is what? It's about two plus billion people connected. And now imagine more than two billion devices getting connected and significantly more than that and the kind of interesting things that it's going to address. We decided that uh, we should create a, a, separate entity, a separate entity to address that market because within the Saskin context framework today, it may not get the right attention. So that's why we, we, we created it as a, as a separate entity and uh, we are nurturing that to address the machine to machine uh, communication space. Going ahead, what will be your strategies, largely organic or inorganic or a mix of both? I think it will be uh, a mix of both. Uh, I think uh, uh, organic has its own, own challenges, inorganic has its own challenges. We primarily follow a 3C model when we look at inorganic growths. Uh, we look either for competency, customer base or, or co-location. So if it fits into any of those three, three categories strongly, then we would definitely look at, look at inorganic methods. But otherwise, uh, we will continue our march organically also because uh, uh, there is enough and more opportunities out there for us to chase. So are we expecting any announcements from Saskin this year? Well, I would not like to speculate on that uh, at this time. Okay, on that note, we've had enough food for thought. I guess it's time we got some breakfast before we settle down to the real agenda of the day. told us what uh, Saskin does, but now we're actually going to see for ourselves uh, what Saskin as a company is all about. So what does the center do? This, this is the, uh, the center where most of our product development happens. So all our multimedia subsystems, our uh, protocol stacks, our uh, uh, application framework, the entire team sits over here and here is where most of uh, the design activities and development activities happen. Last year, you spent about 4.5 total revenues right. on R&D. Do you see that increasing by how much? Yeah. Uh, what is also to be added to what we do is uh, we do a lot of uh, investments in product development, uh, which we, we uh, don't kind of reflect in the R&D part of it because from an accounting perspective, R&D is something for which you still not, you do not have a, a revenue model established. So if you add the, the, uh, the, the amount of uh, spends that we have on the product design and development, it is significantly more actually. If you look at the, the entire shortfall in uh, the revenues minus expenses on the product division last year, which was about four, four and a half, five million dollars, would totally add uh, and, and add significantly to, the, significantly to the overall R&D spends that we have. Uh, talking of that R&D, I was reading some reports which said that Indian R&D contributes about 1.3% of total R&D spends. Mm. Why is it so less? How do you see that changing? I think it's probably linked to the, uh, the, the GDP and the GDP growth uh, of our nation. I think as the GDP grows, I think we'll see more and more spend in innovation and in R&D. I think we are probably still addressing some of the, the Maslow's uh, needs at the, the lower uh, end of the pyramid. And uh, we'll definitely see more spends and more innovation coming out as we go forward. We work mainly on the WCDM and its evolution. So, for example, uh, GSM and its evolution, it's called. 
and anything that relates to that, we, we keep our, our focus on that and keep uh, moving to the next generation uh, uh, requirements that come about in the in the wireless space. So, for example, next is HSDPA, HS UPA. Mm -hmm. Then there is something called the LTE, which is the long-term evolution. So we continue to uh, keep our focus on that and see how we can we can uh, uh, keep our edge on that those kinds of aspects. Mm -hmm. What are the technologies that you think are next gen? See, wireless is is here to stay, and broadband and wireless is also here to stay. So more and more bandwidth will be required uh, as we go forward. And whatever technologies, I mean, be it LTE, be it WiMAX, be it HS, UPA, any of those terminologies that you may necessarily hear, is, is going to continue and stretch the, the bounds of, uh, of the wireless. Because I think convergence, wireless, those are two key words uh, which are driving a lot of uh, demands, a lot of growth in the marketplace. What's the demonstration we're going to see today? We'll see demonstration on uh, some of the phones that have uh, uh, been launched in the marketplace uh, with Saskin's IPR on them. So this is the the uh, phone which has recently been launched in the in the Doco market. Uh, latest model, uh, I think it's the N uh, from NEC 904i, and uh, this is the typical video player that you get on 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 these phones, uh, and this is the kind of quality clarity that you get on on both audio and video. So typically, you can watch uh, movies uh, on on uh, these these kinds of phones where you connect the headset uh, and and uh, and be able to experience. And so, we are the company that's supplying all these uh, things that make this thing possible, and we've been doing it for the last uh, five years now. This is the 52nd model uh, that has been launched in the world market, carrying Saskin's multimedia IPR on it. So if you count the number of phones that have been shipped so far in the last four to five years, I'm sure it will be in, in tens of millions uh, that have already gotten.